Hello, I'm Ralph Monroe, and welcome to Triple Creek Farm. We've had a delightful experience of working with the Capital Land Trust for many, many years. It's fun to see you, and hope you enjoy the tour today. We have an amazing array of wildlife. It's really kind of hard to believe what you see throughout the period of a year. Um, all the small animals, of course, the deer and the coyotes and um, those sort of things, and chipmunks and squirrels and everything you can imagine, all, all kinds of birds, winter birds, summer birds. Um, maybe a cougar comes through once a year. Um, we never have seen one, but we know when he's here because uh, the dogs go crazy. Uh, we have bear in the fall when the apples are ripe. And uh, they not only got the apples last year, but they knocked the heck out of our beehives and destroyed them. So we try to do a bird count every year, sometimes twice a year, at Christmas and then in June. And it's just amazing what you find on one small piece of property with some tidelands. On this particular day, there were double-crested cormorants, 146 is what Audubon counted. And you go down here to buffalo heads, 464 buffalo heads in the bay that day. Incredible. So the archaeologists told us that this was a tribal site for thousands of years. They identified it immediately by the firecracked rock all over the beaches. Everywhere we looked, you could see these ancient stones that were burnt in the fires and broke uh, because of the heat. And so the Squaxin Island tribe and the South Beach Sound Community College teamed up together and they did 10 years of archaeology here. It's just amazing what they found, wet site archaeology as well as dry site archaeology. It's all in the Squaxin Island Tribal Museum and it's just incredible for generations to come to look at. So the Native Americans went up in the woods behind this farm and split big chunks of cedar. Poles that were 16, 18 feet long, four or five inches square, and they built a fence across this bay. This was a traditional salmon trap. And they'd open the gate, the salmon would come in, and they'd close the gate, the tide would go out, and they could pick and choose which salmon they wanted to keep, which ones they wanted to release. Probably the most efficient system in the world. Now this wasn't happening last year or the year before. This dates on these posts, carbon dated, back to 1490. The same year that Michelangelo was painting the Sistine Chapel, Native Americans were here at harvesting salmon. So this is a T.T. Waterman marker that we located here. T.T. Waterman was a ethnographer and anthropologist from California who worked in cooperation with the University of Washington in the 20s and 30s. And he basically traveled on Puget Sound all the way from Nia Bay down to Chehalis with the tribes. He spent several weeks with each tribe and he asked the tribal leaders to take him to all their locations and he drew maps that identified the name of that location and what happened there. So this particular location, one of two on this property, was a place where Chehalis people came up and dug clams. And they would smoke those clams uh, after they dug them. They liked to wipe their feet in the tall grass on this peninsula here. And uh, they would uh, put the clams on skewers and carry them all the way to Slido Falls to trade. Slido Falls is where Bonneville Dam is now located up on the Columbia River. They would trade for Eastern Oregon rock because there's no rock in this area that made points and made arrowheads uh, strong enough. And in the archeology span dig here, we found a lot of Eastern Oregon rock uh, that was identified coming from Eastern Oregon in the result of the trade of those clams at Slido Falls. You know, when we came here, it was pretty much a vacant bay. And now there's houses that popped up all around us and that's to be expected. The whole Puget Sound Basin is gonna grow. And frankly, if we're gonna preserve places like that, now is the time to act. The, these locations are very important to the future generations. So I'd urge any family, any family, whether it's here or anywhere else in South Puget Sound to contact the Capital Land Trust and talk about your property and talk about the opportunities to make sure that generations ahead will have the benefit of preserving your land. 
some people say to me, uh, why'd you do this? And I guess there's environmental reasons and so forth. But frankly, the bottom line is you don't trust your grandchildren. Somebody's going to want to cut it up and develop it into lots and make some quick money. But maybe Grandpa's farm is worth more than that. Maybe what you've worked on all your life is worth more than that. And if it is, it's a simple way to preserve it. Just write it on the title of work with the land trust. It's possible. I've had nothing but an excellent relationship with the Capital Land Trust people. And they've done an amazing job for us. And I know they have for many other families around this valley who we've sent them to. It's remarkable.